Timer has two registers called S1 and S2. S1 equals timer number. S2 equals set value. In this section I have to explain about how to use timer in PLC programming. Open the programming window for that go to file and new. Then provide the file name and select the PLC model number then click OK. In the drop down menu we can choose the model for different Delta PLC model numbers. For this I chose the SS2 model, and leave the other settings like communication all the default. After click OK the programming window will appear. Now we can write the ladder logic for output latch logic. Let's start the programming. First we put the normally open input instruction contact and address as X0. Click OK and place the instruction in the row. Then add the normally close instruction series to the X0 contact and give the address X1. Then select the output coil from the instruction list and give the address as M0. M0 is an internal relay. We have to add an input instruction parallel to the X0. For that click X1 and select the vertical line from the toolbar. After that come to the second row and add the input instruction. Select the device name as M and give the address as 0. Now we are going to use the timer function before that we insert the new row. And add M0 as input. After add M0 dot we have to insert timer instruction from the API list which located in the right side menu. From that open the basic instruction and double click API 96 TMR. Now the window appear which shows the configuration of timer. We open the help icon it will explain the functions available in the timer instruction. Timer has two registers called S1 and S2. S1 equals timer number. S2 equals set value. When TMR instruction is executed, the specific coil of timer is on and timer will start to count. When the setting value of timer is attained, counting value equals setting value, the contact will be changed. S1 have T register and S2 K and D register. Let's configure the timer, S1 select as T and give the address as 0. If we have multiple timer we can choose another address. Choose S2 as K and give the value. This is the value for the timer enable time. Here we chose 100 SEC for this timer. After that we can take the contact of timer. Insert new raw and insert new input and give the address as T0. Then provide the output coil Y0. This output will be configured to the hardware Y0 and it give the physical output to the relays or output device. After that we test the logic which we write, 
or that we have to enable simulation. Click the simulation button, then transfer the file to the PLC by clicking the download button available in the toolbar. Then put the PLC to run mode and then go to online for monitor the ladder logic. First we close the X0 instruction and see the output. Output will not change because the we write wrong address on the normally close contact after it should be X1 instead of X0. We change the address to X1 and go online again. Again we close the input X0, let's see the output M0 become turn on. Also the same time M0 input also become close. Once the M0 close the timer start to run we can see at the K. Once the timer K reach the set point 100 the timer contact T0 enable and the output Y0 turned on. If we want to normalize the timer, we have to open the timer enable contact. For that the X1 should be open. Once open the X1 the timer K will reset and the T0 contact will open and the output coil Y0 also turned off. Again. Repeat the same thing X0 turn on and see the timer function. This is the basic timer function in PLC programming. We need to use the timer for different purposes like control the output after a certain time interval or turn on and off. I hope you all understood about the timer in PLC thanks for watching.